Do you hear that sound? That is the sound of happiness. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make one of Korea's favorite, favorite stews called sundubu jjigae. And today we're gonna to be using bacon. And I'm gonna show you all of my tips and tricks to make this dish at home and really surprise yourself and say, wait, did I really make this? It's so darn good. And this is a small portion recipe, perfect for two people to share, or if you're really, really hungry, perfect for a hungry person. 오늘의 레시피, 아주 간단하고 맛있는 베이컨 순두부찌개 만들기. 오늘도 여러분들과 영어로 함께 하겠습니다. <laughs> I'm steaming my face in happiness. Oh, 순두부 happiness. Hi everyone, this is Helen and welcome to Modern Pepper. 안녕하세요, Modern Pepper의 Helen입니다. To make our sundubu jjigae today, we're gonna use tukbegi. Tukbegi is your earthenware pot. It could retain super, super high temperature, but if you don't have this, you could just use any ordinary pot and you could find this at any big Korean supermarket or you could order this online and the link will be in the description box below. We'll be using four strips of bacon or about 100 grams of bacon. We're gonna cut it down the middle, stack it, and then just cut. So bacon always cuts a little bit better if it's slightly frozen. Then put it on our plate. And we need half of a small onion. Just cut into small chunks. Then we'll put it on our plate. And we need one thin slice of Korean radish, okay? If you don't have Korean radish, just use one of those small, round, pink and red radish. That will work as well. Just about that much. And we need about a quarter cup of the scallion, but just the root end part, the white part. Now, if you could get yourself to a Korean market and buy tepa, which is like Korean extra large scallions, they also look like leeks, but it's it's not leeks. It's just Korean uh, scallion that's really large. That's called tepa, and you could use that. So we need about a quarter cup of the scallion or tepa, just the root end only. So this is for garnishing. So one scallion finely minced for garnishing. And we need like six to eight slices of carrots. So this part's optional. You don't have to put this, but this is zucchini. And we just need about one, two, three, four thin slices. And we're just gonna stack them and just cut them into one, two, like that. And then it goes on our plate right here as well. And we need about one tablespoon of finely minced fresh garlic. Exactly one tablespoon of minced garlic. The recipe information is available at the website you see right here. Now if you want to mimic the taste of how they do it at Sundubu restaurants, you want to use fine ground Korean gochugaru. But if you don't have it, you could certainly just use the coarse ground gochugaru. That will work just as well. Set your heat to high. So make sure to preheat your tukbegi or your pot or your cast iron pot for a good minute or two minutes. So we're gonna add our bacon in first. To this, we're gonna add one pinch of salt, a little bit of black pepper. And we're basically gonna saute this on high heat and let it kind of get, render the fat. And about two minutes later, it looks like this. You can start to see the fat coming out and we want to have that fat, which is gonna add so much uh, yummy taste to our sundubu jjigae. And to this, we're gonna add quarter cup of the scallion, just the root end part, or tepa, if you could get that at a Korean market. Again, your heat still remains at high and we're just gonna saute this for about another minute or two. All right, so we want our bacon to be browned like this. Notice all the fat, bacon fat. This is gonna add so much flavor to our sundubu jjigae, but if you're not a big fan of bacon fat, just take out half of it. And to this, I'm gonna add one tablespoon of kon gochugaru, that's gochugaru that's finely ground, and just mix it up. Ooh, look at that color. Woo! 
Quickly, we're gonna add two and a half cups of hot water. So when you're making this, wow. You wanna continue building on the heat of your pot, so don't add cold water. Two cups, and to this, half a cup. So that's two and a half cups of hot water. And to that, we're gonna add our onions, our Korean radish, and our one tablespoon of garlic, minced garlic. We mix that up. And to this, I'm gonna add one tea bag of our Tashi uh, mix. Make sure your heat remains at high and kind of push this in there like that. We're gonna put our lid on it and then we're gonna lower our heat to medium like that. And we're gonna let this cook for about five to seven minutes. So you ask, what is Tashi Pek? In this tea bag, you'll find dried anchovies, dried sea kelp, scallions, and dried shrimp, depending on the package you get for enhancing the flavor of your broth. So you could buy this at any Korean supermarket or check the description box below for the product link. Or you could add three of these dried anchovies called tashi merchi and a small piece of dry sea kelp, tashima, instead of the tea bag. Now make sure you're only using dried anchovies that are at least one inch long in length. It's been about a little over six minutes. Wow, that looks good already. All right, now we're gonna take out our tashi pek, our tashi tea bag. Squeeze out everything from the tea bag. We don't wanna waste any of our sundubu liquid. Okay, so here is our extra soft, we also call them silken sundubu, and each packet is about 11 ounces. So we're gonna need two of these and we're just gonna cut it down the middle. Oops. Okay, just gonna add our tofu. Just squeeze out, it just slides out easily. Here's another one. Now we're gonna turn our heat back up to high and just take a spoon and just break it up. I mean, it'll break up on its own, like so. Look how bright red that looks. You know it's gonna be spicy and you're gonna love it. All right, so to this, we're gonna add our carrots. We're gonna add one teaspoon of brown sugar. It's not supposed to make it taste sweet. It's just to round out the spicy taste a little bit. Mix it up. We're gonna add half a tablespoon of gukkanjang. This is extra salty soy sauce for broth. We're gonna add that in here. If you wanna learn more about different kinds of Korean soy sauces, make sure to check out my tutorial on must-have Korean seasonings. The video link is in the description box below. All right, so we're gonna let this boil on high heat for five minutes and it's almost ready. This is optional. You don't have to put it if you want to. We're gonna add one teaspoon of sogogi dashita. That's beef bouillon powder. It goes so well with like pork and meat dishes. This is gonna take your sundubu jjigae to another level if you add this. But you know, if you don't wanna add it, don't add it. When you go to sundubu uh, specialty restaurants, they always serve this oi banchan. This is like lightly pickled kirby cucumbers. Amazing because the stew is so spicy, but this kind of you know balances out and cools down your mouth. So I have a recipe for this. The video link is in the description box below, so check it out. Super easy to make. All right, so it's been boiling for five minutes. So we're just gonna add our zucchini or squash slices. This doesn't even need to cook much because it cooks in literally nanoseconds. Look at that. All right, we're gonna turn this off and have a taste. Going with a spoon. Look. You always have to taste what you make, right? Oh, it looks so spicy. Oh my God, that is so good. I made it though. <laughs> and so can you. If you want your sundubu jjigae to be saltier, add a little bit of salt. For me, this level of saltiness is like perfect. Now for those of you that want that extra spicy taste, instead of adding more gochukaru, add some red or green spicy peppers. And then our scallions right in the middle. And some green and 
the peppers. And then we're just gonna drizzle just a little bit of sesame oil on top like that. And this is ready. To add the egg or not is the question. So you could go in with a chopstick and mix it all up to create a slurry of egg or make sure that the egg stays submerged under the broth and come back to it in about a couple minutes. Look at that. Two minutes later, you have your egg yolk that you could put on your rice like that. Ooh, oh, look at that, it broke. And then you pour some of this on top, the sundubu, mix it all up. Yup, that's a way to have it like this. But I don't like to add eggs to my sundubu jjigae. I like to eat it as is. <laughs> I'm steaming my face in happiness. Sundubu happiness. Always start with the broth first, right? Ah, oh. oh yeah, do I even need to say anything? Come to mama. When you have really, really yummy Korean stews or soups, especially spicy, soju starts calling. <laughs> and it's a good call, because it'll make you feel better. You have to be of legal age to drink. Before rice, I'm gonna have a shot of cold soju, because that's just the way to do it. Now, life is really good. <laughs> now I could go in and have it with just the tofu only with bacon. Oh. Mm. oh. It just like dissipates in your mouth. Look, it jiggles so light and airy and the taste is so mild. Oh, but it's such a good combination with this delicious uh, spicy liquid heaven in your mouth. And you know, when you eat this, you could serve yourself in small bowl or whatever, but this is all mine for moi only. So I'm gonna go in with my rice, indulge. Look at that. I would feed you through the screen, but I can't, so make it at home. Mm. Ta-da! It's a little spicy, but it's perfect. You wanna cool down your mouth with this cucumber panchan side dish. Simple meal. And yet, so, so comforting. I wanna thank everyone for watching today. And if you enjoyed watching today's video, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it if you would click on that thumbs up icon because doing so does wonders for my channel and I totally would appreciate your support. 여러분, 오늘 재밌게 보셨으면 꼭 좋아하는 버튼 눌러주세요. 구독 버튼도 눌러주시고요. 다음 비디오에서 꼭 뵙겠습니다. All right, folks, I will see you in one of the videos you see right here.